Hello there, welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with today's fountain pen video, Jin Hao's Greatest Hits. I could have titled this video Jin Hao's Greatest Clones, but that might have caused my video to go viral and we can't have that. I'm already smug and obnoxious enough, even for my tastes. So I thought it might be cool to look at some of the models of Jin Hao fountain pens that have been very popular lately. Jin Hao has had quite a few new models in the last year or so, but I'm going to focus on the ones that people have been generally enthusiastic about. And there are five of them, plus a new one that I will review right now. <laughs> I wanted to show you the five models of Jin Hao that I think have been noteworthy over the last year or so, and I'll review this new model, Jin Hao 82, I've just received as well. The four noteworthy pens are, in no particular order, the Jin Hao X159, the Jin Hao 100 Centennial, the Jin Hao X850, the Jin Hao X350, and the Jin Hao 80. The Jin Hao Centennial came out a couple of years ago, but really exploded in popularity when Jin Hao started making it in a dizzying variety of colors, finishes, and finial combinations. I even did some finial swapping to get this one in Galaxy with black finials and a black section. This, of course, is a clone of the frequently copied Parker Duofold Centennial. When I did my best of 2021 video, I called the Jin Hao Centennial the IMBB4YPBP of 2021, which is Inquiring Minds Best Buy for Your Pen Buck Pen. Say that five times fast. I can't keep up with the variety of colors and finishes available now with this model. You can get them with a wide range of nibs now, too from E, F, F, M, and even a bent nib or fude option. But the Jin Hao Centennial's popularity pales in comparison to the new Jin Hao X159. This fantastic upgrade of the Sherman tank of fountain pens, the Jin Hao 159, has been talked about more than any Chinese pen in recent memory. If this were a piston filler, the Western fountain pen world would have a meltdown and sink down all the way to China. Forget the fact that this semi-precious resin cartridge converter pen is dimensionally a perfect copy of the venerable Mont Blanc 149, which alone is enough to get some panties in a full wad and other knickers in a maximum twist. <laughs> And forget the fact that this pen has a number eight size steel nib that writes very nicely indeed. Thank you very much. I thank you. But this terrific fountain pen is only six bucks. <gasps> Fat pens for the great unwashed ink stained masses. What's that in your hand, Basil? What? Gravitas Pens is now even using the number eight size steel Jin Hao nib in their titanium pen. I'm not sure when we'll start seeing more colors and more nib options in the coming months for this model. What we won't see, I predict, is a piston filler from Jin Hao anytime soon. I wish they'd prove me wrong. The Jin Hao 80 caused quite a ruckus as well, this time from the Lamy enthusiast who claimed it was a ripoff of the Lamy 2000. It most certainly is not a Lamy 2000 clone. If anything is a Lamy 2000 clone, it's this Moonman TI 500, which is very similar indeed. No, the Jin Hao 80 isn't a clone of the Lamy 2000. Sure, it looks like the same pen on the outside, but open it up and it doesn't have the metal section, the hooded nib, and isn't a piston filler. You'd have to redefine your terminology before you can call this a clone. The Jin Hao 80 is more a clone of the Lamy Ion, if you ask me. There are a lot of similarities between these two models. It's like Jin Hao took the outside of the Lamy 2000 and merged it with the inside of the Lamy Ion, all for around 10 bucks. The nice thing about the Jin Hao 80 is you can pull that nib off and put any Lamy Z50 nib on as a replacement. This one has a Lamy cursive nib on it. I like the stealth black look, and it writes really nicely. And then most recently, Jin Hao has released two enamel over brass pens that I originally thought were replacements for the X450 and the X750 models. And that is this Jin Hao X850 and the Jin Hao X350. But these pens are new models in their own right, and I don't see Jin Hao ending 
the X450 or the X750 models anytime soon. They're much too popular and cheap like Borscht. The 850 is the bigger of the two and has the small indents in the section as finger guides. The X350 is slimmer and has a smooth barrel shaped section. So who is Jinhao going after with this latest new model, the Jinhao 82? Well, I think it's pretty obviously Sailor with the Sailor Pro Gear Slim. So let's look at the parts and features of this pen. Then I'll do some size comparisons and some measurements and then provide a writing sample. And then I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this and the other Jinhao fountain pens. Overall, the Jinhao 82 is a short, light, injection molded, flat top fountain pen. It's small enough to be considered a pocket pen. And here it is with my Pilot E95S, which is considered a pocket pen. And you can see they're almost the same size. The 82 originally came in four colors, but now Jinhao is offering more solid colors and a whole range of transparent or translucent models. And note the price here, $2.99 US. The pen is pretty much identical in dimensions to the Sailor Pro Gear Slim. The only real difference is the Sailor's 14 karat gold nib and the Sailor anchor on the top finial, which the Jinhao obviously does not have. Having written with a Sailor gold nib before, I assure you that that is a big difference right there. From the top, you see the flat finial where Jinhao restrained themselves from adding their chariot logo to mimic the Sailor. The top finial is separated from the cap by a gold metal ring that holds the gold metal clip in place. The clip is the new understated look from Jinhao's new models and is fairly stiff, but it is usable. And it's also different from the Sailor. So if the price tag and the lack of the Sailor anchor on the top of the pen weren't clues enough for you, the clip should tell you that this isn't a Sailor. The cap tapers up to a single gold metal band, which has Jinhao engraved on the front and no model number on the back. And the Sailor Pro Gear has two cap bands. The barrel tapers all the way down its length to another gold metal ring which separates the flat end finial from the barrel. The cap unscrews with one and two full rotations to reveal the tapering black plastic section and a number five size steel Jinhao fine nib and black plastic feed. The section is separated from the barrel with another gold metal band and these cap threads are smooth to the touch. The nib and the feed are part of a nib assembly that unscrews for replacement or maintenance. So let's take a closer look at this nib. It is the standard number five Jinhao nib that we've seen for years with the Jinhao chariot logo with Jinhao and an F for fine. The section unscrews to reveal the included Jinhao branded standard international converter and there's a silicone o-ring at the top of the nozzle to keep the barrel from unscrewing during use and the inside of the cap shows a plastic cap liner that seals the nib from evaporation the cap posts very deeply and very securely which is a good thing because this pen needs to be posted unposted the pen is almost too short to write with and i have medium-sized hands posted it is a nicely comfortable length Again, here is my Pilot E95S, and here is the Pro Gear, sorry, Jinhao 82, and you can see they're very similar in size. The E95S is about 10 millimeters longer when they're posted. I bought this pen on AliExpress at the Lusfer store for $4.99, although now, as I mentioned before, it can be purchased for almost half that. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here's the Jinhao 82 with a Jinhao X350, a Jinhao X850, a Jinhao X159, and a Pilot E95S. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. The Jinhao 82 being a steel number five size nib and the X350 and the X850 are steel number six size nibs with the X159 having a steel number eight size nib. And of course the E95S is 14 karat gold. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. The E95S isn't designed to be written with unposted. And I would argue that you shouldn't write with the Jinhao 82 either unposted. It's very, very short. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample.
And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Jinhao 82. And it has a number five size steel fine nib. Let's check the wetness. Well, it's okay. It's not really juicy, uh, but it's okay right now. And that's because I worked on it. This pen was extremely dry when I first inked it. Here's the writing sample I did when I inked the pen for the first time. You can see how very dry it was. I decided to try the seven strokes to inky happiness that I use on almost every pen BBS fine nib that I buy. You have to be careful not to spring the nib when you press firmly into the page. Just spread those tines a little bit, like that. I did it seven times, it helped a little bit. So I did it a few more times, and then I used my spark plug gapping tool on it with a 003 inch or a 0 0.076 millimeter shim, and I gently flossed the slit between the tines, and that helped as well. You can see that now it's writing at least darker than it was up here. And the nib needed some smoothing as well, so I did, gave it some figure eights on some 12,000 grit uh, micro mesh. And that has helped this nib quite a bit. It is smooth and it is decently wet for a very fine nib and it has a lot of feedback. You can probably hear that. And the ink today is Diamine Upon a Star, which is part of the 2022 Diamine Ink Event Calendar Collection. And here's the swatch I did on Tomoe River paper. Uh, Diamine calls this a chameleon ink, and you can see that it has, or well, you might not be able to see, it has a reddish sheen and a bluish silver shimmer to it. But you don't see any of that uh, from this pen because it's much too fine. And as to some line variation, this is a very stiff, as you saw when I was pressing it, very stiff nib. So you're not gonna get any line variation out of it. And the line this nib makes is 0 0.4 millimeters in thickness, which makes it a western extra fine or a Japanese fine on my Richard Binder chart, which you can find linked in the description. And for our quote, And for some reverse writing, it's almost the same in reverse. Lots of feedback, but it's doing it. And for some quick writing. Yeah, it has no difficulty keeping up. So what do I like and what do I not like about these fountain pens? What do these six Jin Hao fountain pens have in common other than being Jin Hao? Well, they are all champs at nib swapping. One of the main reasons for the popularity of the Jin Hao X450 and X750 and the 159 pens other than their price was that they are great pens for swapping nibs in and out. Jin Hao number six and number five nibs are standard sizes and you can swap in most other brands of nibs. There are also tons of generic steel nibs in number five and number six sizes, from extra fine to broad and in all variety of stubs, architects, and fude nibs. So if you're a sketcher who needs a range of line thicknesses from needle points to paint brushes, all you have to do is buy a bunch of the Jin Hao body style you like and swap in some nibs and you have a sketcher's palette of line widths that won't break the bank. They're also very well made pens for very little money relatively. Will they age well? Well, probably not. They'll scratch and the gold of the questionable gold content plating will flake off and tarnish. But they'll probably also keep working for a long time. And if one does crack or break, 
three bucks gets you another. That's quite a bit less than a Starbucks quad long shot grande in a venti cup, half calf, double cupped, no sleeve salted caramel mocha latte with two pumps of vanilla, two substitute pumps of white chocolate mocha for mocha, and substitute two pumps of hazelnut for toffee nut, half whole milk and half brevet with no whipped cream, extra hot, extra foam, extra caramel drizzle, extra salt, and a scoop of vanilla bean powder with light ice well stirred. But about the same price as a Vente Cafe Americano. The Jinhao X159 is the exception here when it comes to nib swapping, as it has a number 8 size nib, and there are fewer inexpensive options for that size nib available. So what are my likes and dislikes for the Jinhao 82 specifically? Well, I'm not a fan of smaller, thinner pens, with the total exception of my Pilot E95S. So the small nib on the 82, along with the very slender body, will probably mean I won't be writing with this pen. And the nib is very fine, dry, and stiff, even after I've done some work on it. So it's too small and dry. Too small and dry. Well, I wouldn't say that. I do like the way the pen posts, and it's fairly comfortable in the hand for a small pen. And as always, your mileage may vary. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens, as I'm now an affiliate of the online store. And when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. this.